During the third act, Hannah John Kemen's Maya says, I'll give you anything you want. I'm a simple man with simple tastes, and I don't demand too much of life, so I'll just say, how about something better than Unwelcome, written and directed by John Wright, who did Tormented, Grabbers, and also Robot Overlords. This is also written by Mark Stay, wow, who also wrote Robot Overlords. Thankfully, no Robot Overlords in Unwelcome. Boy, this movie certainly was Unwelcome. If you've seen Grabbers, that was a neat little movie. That was about getting really, really pissed drunk, so you couldn't be taken away by aliens. I'm not saying it was aliens, but it was aliens. I just said it right there. So, yeah, Hannah John Kamen, or Kamen, I'm not actually sure how to pronounce her name. She plays Maya, and if the name sounds familiar, but you can't quite place it, she was Ghost in Ant-Man and the Wasp, and she was also Jill Valentine in the most recent Resident Evil movie. Resident Evil, Welcome to Raccoon City. Or Resident Evil, Raccoon City. Resident Evil, how the fuck did they make something so goddamn bad? It was only beaten by old as far as worst movie of 2021. Douglas Booth is also in this as Jamie. And man, boy, Jamie is certainly a character... So Douglas Booth was in Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, a movie that had a really neat little idea that didn't explore it nearly enough. Seriously, that movie could have been great, and it somehow wasn't. It somehow wasn't, despite having Pride and Prejudice and goddamn zombies in it. The title was right there. It was ripe for fun, ripe for the picking. As Ronda Rousey said on commentary once, if you're a non-wrestling fan, you have no idea what I'm talking about. <clears throat> and also, Colm Meany. Oh, you're such a meanie, Colm. So anyway... Um, he was in uh, Deep Space Nine, by the way, in case you're wondering. He plays Whelan, or Wellen. Maybe he's Weldon. Maybe he's Weldon for a Wellen. I mean, <laughs> the plot, such as it is, involves Maya and James, who find out that they're going to have a kid, and they're living in London, and then there's a home invasion, and they decide, ah, to hell with it, we're going to go to rural Ireland, and be in peace and tranquility, and oh, it turns out that <laughs> Jamie's aunt left him a house, a house that's nice and tranquil and out in the middle of nowhere, as is tradition, I imagine, with a lot of Ireland places. I don't really know because I've never been to Ireland, but it's a beautiful looking country, and this house, it's a fixer-upper. There's a hole in the roof, it looks like an old cottage, and it looks great. It's got a great garden, and also it's got a weird door that leads to a strange area that happens to... How's strange things? That's just what I'll say. If you haven't read the description, I'm going to keep this as vague as possible. But it kind of tries to be a bit of a grim fairy tale, while also being a comedy, while also being a horror movie, and it doesn't do any of them right. Um, I'm not going to lie. Despite the neat uh, little idea that at the center of this movie, it doesn't explore it enough, and it tries to be funny, but it's not funny enough to justify the lack of scares, and it's not scary enough to justify the lack of laughs. And it's also, it also possesses very little ingenuity and possesses every single character, <clears throat> every single character in this movie actually possesses some of the most annoying qualities to work. You don't care if the heroes, the villains, or even the bit characters just suddenly vanish, burst into goddamn flames, or pints of Guinness just bursting out of them. I'm so sorry to every single Irish person watching this because there are some great Ireland, Welsh, UK-based horror movies. Plenty. The Feast <coughs> is one that comes to mind. That was Welsh. Plenty of great movies have come out of Ireland and England and all that and everything, and I wanted this to be good because the idea seemed kind of neat. It wasted Hannah, who is gorgeous, by the way. Good grief, she is gorgeous. And she's been good in other stuff. <coughs> Douglas Booth He's not bad either. There's a few people in this are actually decent actors, and this movie seems like it was almost made while well, every single loved one of every single cast and crew member was held hostage by a supervillain in a weather balloon or something. I don't know how this movie somehow managed to be so goddamn bad, so poorly written, and any ideas that could have started to bubble up and be good were instantly forgotten about, and the tone was all over the goddamn map. There's nothing wrong with making a comedy horror movie that bounces around. They try to have some commentary about England invading Ireland, but that's quickly forgotten about. Um, the Wellen family, or the Whelan family, or whatever the hell the goddamn name said, because I don't even remember because this movie pissed me off so goddamn much, 
There are a bunch of caricatures, and um, the Mr. Meanie, such a meanie head, he leaves the whole goddamn thing. He's the dad. And then there's a very old uh, son that literally looks about 10 years older than him, just based on the look that they have, the Irish Santa look, as, as it were. And then there's a couple other people, and <laughs> there are certain things that must be done to keep this house in order, and instantly Maya and Jamie forget how to do that. And also they have a kid on the way. And also these strange things might factor into this kid's well-being and all that, and I really can't say much of anything more without getting into spoilers, which I will soon, but this movie, this movie pissed me off. It pissed me off because it wasn't funny, it wasn't scary, it had no good, it had no good discernible qualities, despite any decent idea that, you know, may have been at the center of it. It didn't explore any of it. By the time it got to anything that could have been deemed fun, everybody was checked out of the goddamn movie. This was horribly written. This was horribly acted. The gore effects, I guess, were decent. But the acting was especially shit from people that have been good in other things. So I have to blame the Ryan. I have to blame the goddamn tone. <clears throat> and also, any attempt to make this thing fanciful and make this thing all, you know, crazy and weird, it, nothing clicks. Nothing clicks at all from the opening. I knew that this movie was in trouble, but I'm like, okay, bad opening isn't the worst thing in the world. Ghost Ship had a great opening. It ended up being shit. So maybe a bad opening turns into something good to know. It just gets worse. It gets a lot worse. This might actually be one of the worst movies of the year. And I gladly paid almost eight bucks for it because it's only available on Amazon. It's not at Shutter yet. <clears throat> and I decided to add a hell with it. Throw a few bucks, support the artist. Why not? They could do other things. Grabbers, again, wasn't all that bad. But this was not good. This was not good at all. And John Wright has proven himself to be at least a halfway decent director and writer in the past. So I don't know why in the world this is such a goddamn misfire. But yeah, even the beautiful locations and even a few little things that could have bubbled up and been good just get immediately cooled off. It's like they turned the burner off and they said, let's turn this burner on. Oh, well, okay, that cooked for a couple minutes. Let's do this. Let's go over here. Let's not have a central focus. Let's make every character so goddamn annoying you don't care what happens to them. So yeah, I'm going to get into spoilers. You can check it out on Amazon or wait till Shudder. If you got Shudder, you might want to check that out there. <laughs> Shudder actually isn't all that bad. Anyway, three, two, one. Shudder's great. Spoilers. No, seriously, Shudder is actually great. It is a great horror-themed, um, exclusively horror-themed streaming service. It's great. Okay, so basically <clears throat> what happened is Jamie's aunt ended up not taking care of certain, <clears throat> certain individuals that were in the garden. The certain individuals are, they're called... Um, they're called Little People, the Fard, uh, the Fard uh, Darig, or the Red Caps. Mischievous little goblins, basically. That's what it is. They're, they're fucking goblins. So let's talk about that opening sequence, though, first. The opening sequence, <coughs> they live in a decent apartment, actually. But they're also next to a mini-mart that has these three painfully generic criminal guys, criminal characters... They're bothering Jamie, and Jamie proves himself to be a weakling because he wants to stand up for his wife, and he's also a weakling. And they find out that they're, they're going to have a kid. Okay, great. Let me go get some champagne at this. And they, oh, there are these weird creeps staying outside the thing. Maybe we should just stay in. No, I'll go get this. And then he tells them, basically, my wife's expecting a kid. This is not an alcoholic. Fuck off. And then they invade and then they kick her in the stomach and they beat him up they beat him up decently but not to the point where i don't think he couldn't have gotten up and swung i don't know a chair at one of them she <clears throat> doesn't end up stabbing uh, you know one of the guys in the neck even though she has every opportunity to do so like about five fucking minutes and then they go to rural ireland and they find out about the aunt there's this pastor character this priest character that finds out jamie got or not jamie but Maya got an abortion, and I can't approve of your decision, but I under, but I hope you can find peace. I'm so sorry to every Irish person, but God, everybody was so generic in his wife. Were you so generic and so painful to watch unwelcome? This movie wanted you to feel unwelcome. This movie made everybody with a brain feel unwelcome, seemingly. So, yes. Um, what, how did you pronounce this? It was N-I... 
A M E or H, but it was pronounced Neve. I don't get it. It's like Sersha Ronan's name. I don't understand how you get Sersha out of how that's spelled. Nevertheless, she warns him, you need to place an offering of like some liver or some meat or whatever and place it every morning or evening. Place it every day and that'll appease them. Because your aunt didn't and then your aunt's uh, husband died. And then the child died. <coughs> or the child was taken away. By what? By the red cast. By the little people. And then they need that hole in the roof fixed so they get Calm Meanie, Mr. Meanie Head, and his family of generic band of misfits, basically, to get in and fix this. But they, as Irish people, basically say, oh, you're English, we're just going to rip up your shit and, to, and basically be the worst repair people ever. There was a guy named Seamus, I'm not kidding, fella, except without the H, Seriously, that was the guy's name. He ends up being drunk, kicked out. He gets killed by the Red Caps. Let me just, apparently how they did this stuff with the Red Caps is they had actors and then they just made the sets wider in the shots or whatever to make it look like they were little people. The special effects aren't even that terrible. And this is more of a throwback to the 80s, like, you know, goofy fantasy horror movies. The problem is those were entertaining and had mostly life and energy, and this doesn't have any of that. It has nothing. This is almost an Ireland version of Hobgoblins. Not from a production standpoint. There was some money put into this, but as far as the tone, as far as the acting, the lack of, and as far as the character work, and as far as really anything positive beyond the budget, this movie basically was an Irish version of Hobgoblins. If you have seen MST3K, you know that's not a compliment. Um... <coughs> And then the seat Neve offers, hey, I you forgot to do this. Let me come and do this. And then Maya mentions the home invasion stuff and all that. And then basically the not if the little elves thing, if the little elves are not taking care of good God, they will absolutely destroy her. And Wellen keeps insisting that Maya call him daddy. No, really, that is a joke that is driven into the goddamn ground or driven in like an ice pick or an icicle, like in Die Hard. Remember Die Hard? An icicle to the eye actually would have been less painful than watching Unwelcome, by the way. Um, <clears throat> they visit Deanne's grave, they find out from the pastor, all this stuff. The baby got taken. <laughs> and then... They start. They buy liver at this mar, this mini mart, by the way, that is stocked full of not only American food, but one of the one of the nicest old Irish guys. Oh, yeah, Aunt Academy. So I'll make sure you have it on the house. I'm so sorry. I'm again. I'm so sorry, but I can't help it. But no, in all seriousness, the guy, the, the Irish, the, the Irish guy owning the mini mart, by the actually been the best actor in the movie. The dog was the actual best actor in the movie because the dog understood his screen time was valuable and would appear here and there. <laughs> and then a little bit later, Maya sees, you know, she does the first offering, you know, puts the plate there with the liver and they gobble it up and all that. And they gobbling it up as it were. <clears throat> and <laughs> they, she goes through this door and ends up in this fanciful land it's really just the fucking forest. She follows the clearly, you know, magical possessed dog <clears throat> that, and that she ends up um, basically being targeted by the son, the Irish Santa son, Eon, 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 O, E O I N. I think that's how it's said. He tries to attack her. Um, that doesn't work. She does see the elven lair temporarily and then. <clears throat> She manages to escape him, and how, is this, how does she manage to escape him? Because the Red Caps dr drag him away. And then the rest of the family is coming to look for help, or coming to look for him. And the red, one of the Red Caps shows up and, with the guy's head in the bag. And then kind of goes to the womb, like they're going to take the baby. Just, yeah, take the baby. Take, take, take anything at this point. Take anything if you will make this interesting. <laughs> so then... Home invasion. They're burning the shit down. The Wellens are. They. Too many pronouns, pal. Sorry, Mr. McMahon line took over. But they, they. Wellens invade and do all this. And then Maya, pregnant, by the way, manages to get to the goddamn woods. They find the head, the head in the bag, not eight heads in a duffel bag. 
That was actually a movie, believe it or not. That was a movie. They made a movie based on Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag. And it actually called it Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag. So as far as literal tag or literal titles, it actually did make sense. <laughs> Had Joe Pesci in it. Joe Pesci, who could have fit in that duffel bag? So she goes to the Red Cats, I'll give you anything you want. Gee, I wonder what they're going to do, huh? To save the husband, what's going to happen? So then 25 minutes left. 25 minutes left, and finally the Red Caps show up. <clears throat> Maybe they threw an extra 500 whatever currency it is. 500 grand of whatever currency it is in Ireland. And basically they said, oh, we can finally show these people. <clears throat> these little people. One gets through the hole in the roof and is almost immediately killed by, uh, you know, Mr. Meanie Head. And then four end up gutting the sister. <laughs> he ends up shooting one of them. It gets dragged away by the others. And then Maya and Jamie are left on their own. Maya, by the way, who is suddenly, her water broke during this and is suddenly having her kid <clears throat> And Wellen has this, and he's like, I'll just shoot you right here. And then all of a sudden, boom, you know, um, he gets taken down by the dog. The dog that makes his final appearance. And, well, I should think it's his second to last appearance. And this never runs off. And he's got this gun with these bird shots in. He has to get really close. And then she says, how close do I need to get? Boom. And she Kurt Cobain's him. <laughs> you gauge your, you gauge your uh, door. Cool. I gauge my whole face. This is going well. Anyway, pulled a Chris Von Eric right there. Why not just insult everybody by this point? Because this movie was insulting the filmmaking. And then the whole idea is everything seems fine. Everything seems fine, but we still have a number of minutes left. If, they, if it was going to end right there, okay. The whole idea is maybe suddenly they're fine, they're cool, and then the baby gets taken. Then she goes to the lair, and then she finds this old lady that it turns out actually was the baby that the aunt had taken away. And then Maya kills one <coughs> red cap and then kills the old lady, who apparently was her queen, because suddenly they call her mother red cap, she shows up, the baby's fine, and she gets bathed in blood and spins around like this. Wee! And that's it. That was 96 minutes uh, of my life that I will never get back. Fuck you, Unwelcome. Fuck you, John. Sorry, but maybe not that, because I'm sure he tried. But just, this movie, this movie was abysmal. <clears throat> it wasn't funny. It wasn't scary. It was totally all over the goddamn place. It was terrible. It was goddamn terrible. It gets an F. It gets an absolute F. This sucked. This really, really sucked. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Recklin. I'll see you soon.